Hi everyone, happy Monday. So we're doing something a little different today um, since uh, my color and chat had to pop up on Saturday. I don't like doing color and chats back to back. I like having a variety of videos. I think you guys do too. Um, and some people, they don't like the color and chats. Some people don't like the flip throughs. Um, so I try to do videos that, you know, appeal to as many people as possible. So I got another gift from my in-laws for Christmas, which was these. Um, this is the Sargent Art watercolor crayons. There's 24 of them, and um, they do sell a 30 pack. These are currently, as of January 10th, 2021, selling uh, on Amazon US for about $20. Um, so a lot of us are very familiar in the coloring community with these, which are the Karen Dash Neo Color 2s. Um, these are amazing, De definitely not knocking them, um, but they are very high budget items. Um, the 30 set, I believe, goes for about $50, and then the 15 color one goes for about $30. So um, I always like trying to find budget-friendly alternatives to things um, and I don't know if you would 100% call these watercolor crayons they might be they probably end up my guess is they have more pigment in them but I would like to try to al find alternatives because when you're trying especially when you're trying a new product you don't you don't really want to drop a whole bunch of money on something you may or may not like so um, I saw these and I don't know why, but in my brain, sorry, that was a cat, just randomly probably chasing another cat, knowing my luck. Um, lost my train of thought. Watercolor crayons. <laughs> Sometimes you just want to try a product out to see if you're going to like it. Um, and so you don't may not want to drop $30 or $50 on um, a big pack of something you're not going to use. So... Any chance I get, I like to get the budget-friendly alternatives. Now, granted, I can't get all the ones out there. Um, I do know Faber-Castell makes one. When I was looking around, I think I saw Prang. For all I know, Crayola might. Stadler does. Munyo does, which I'm intrigued because theirs are about the same price. But what's weird is their box art looks exact, exactly the same, guys. Exactly the same. That's interesting. Anyway, so we're going to take a look at these. We're going to try them out. And so some of you guys that may want to try like the watercolor type crayons for your coloring and you just don't have the money or you don't want to spend the money on the Neo Colors and you just want to see if you like them, here's some budget friendly alternatives. So there's 24 in here. Like I said, there is a 36 pack. And here they are. It's a very nice little box will not be storing them any other way. They're going to just stay right in here and turn that around. Here are your colors. Looks like we have a nice selection of greens, nice selection of blues. Um, if you count the ochre as a brown, you've really only got like two browns right here. You've got this kind of ochre tannish color, salmon pink color. Um, couple pinks, just one violet, few reds, one orange, few yellows. You've got a gray, you've got a green blue. Yeah. So I mean, nothing surprising in a 24 set. I'm not sure what's in the 30 set. Um obviously if I like these, I probably would like to get the 30 set as well. So if you do want to see just out of curiosity what they look like compared to the Karen Dash pull the yellow out. This is close enough. So here is the Sergeant Art. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There you go. Yellow. And then here is the Karen Dash yellow. These are shorter. I'd say they're they're maybe a little smaller in dang. I think they're about the same in diameter. Um, this may be a little bit thicker. But anyway, they are shorter, so do keep that in mind. All right, so what we're going to do is I just grabbed a piece of cardstock, I guess. 
I just want something a little bit thicker than printer paper. Um, one thing I've learned is I do want to try to mess around with stuff before I actually put it on any coloring page. So, what we're going to do, let's pick the orange. Now, that's weird. The paper, <laughs> well the paper slides, so that's good. Alright, so there's the orange. What we're going to do, that's just kind of like light pressure. It's a little bit heavier pressure. There we go. And I'm going to use one of my water brushes. We're going to use the Arteza one? Yeah, sure, why not? Why not? Like I said, this is not, <laughs> I wouldn't say this is an official demo. This is not a review. This is just a, hey, I am opening the box and y'all are going to play with them with me and see what they're doing. So let me zoom in. I lose focus if I use the software. It's easier just to use the camera. Okay, so I've put the color down. Now we're going to activate it with the water brush. Very nice. Just playing around the edges. Not bad, not bad. Now let's do the darker pigment. Mmm, very nice. Lines disappeared. Nice, nice dark color there. That's exactly what I would want. One of the things I was worried about was their level of pigment. I just was worried they would not, it would not be super, um, super pigmented because um, that's one of the things you run into. And now let's try the Karen Dash one. And this is just an orange, I think. The color I'm using the 30 set, so there's a little bit off difference here. Yeah, it's just orange. Okay. So here is using it lightly. And here is the heavy pressure. Actually, I think the Sargent Art pigment was a little darker on the actual coloring part. So let's make sure the brush is clean. Yep. All right. So let's activate this. This, however, dissolves in the water a whole lot faster. Now the colors are not exactly the same. This yellow this orange has more yellow in it and that's more of just like a true just medium orange color so they're not going to be like matching color for color this does dissolve i mean just at a at a brush stroke this definitely is going to dissolve a lot easier on you but for the price point of the product and the type product it is it wasn't like I was expecting the sergeant art to outperform the Karen Dash I was just curious I don't think at least on this cardstock the sergeant art is necessarily um, that bad of a deal honestly the lighter pigment didn't dissolve the lines as much as I would have liked. I really had to go harder on that. All right, well, let's try a blend and see what happens. All right, so we've done orange. Let's put those back. Now I want to try, let's try like a dark blue to a light blue. So I'll do the Prussian blue, ultramarine, and light. So yeah, let's try a blend here. So we've got Go ahead and use pretty 
heavy pressure here. Like I said, it does take a little bit of pressure to get some pigment on here. And I'm just going to start in the middle with the ultramarine. Down a little bit. And then go to the light blue. does look a little grainier when it goes down on the paper. You gotta kinda really anyway. Alright, so we have done those three and then we will try from the Karen Dash, we will try Ultramarine Ultramarine Blue what color is that? Oh, also Prussian blue. And is there a light blue? I think there is. There's two. Which one is more? See, yeah, that light blue is almost more of a turquoise, but we'll use the light blue that comes in the Karen Dash. So. Now, yeah, in terms of lay down, your. This feels more like a really smooth crayon. Like, you can tell it's it's not as... Make sure I'm still on camera. It's not quite as choppy looking. It's not as difficult to put heavier pressure down. But again, nothing surprising on that. There's that. And then let's do this. So yeah, the blue looks a little different. The other blue is more of like, I guess closer to turquoise. And this is closer to like a sky blue. So again, keep that in mind. Alright, let's let me switch things real quick. So yeah, the lay down is definitely smoother for the Karen Dash. If you're putting heavy pressure on this Argent Art, you might get these little bits of wax or whatever the crayon's made of. So we'll see if that actually affects um the thing. Now, do I have a lot of experience doing this? No. You see little bits, but if I work at it, those little bits do go away. So, so that's good. Just may have to work at it a little bit. And I am there's plenty of pigment because I'm having to um, dab it onto a paper towel. Hmm. I probably could have used less here, but that's okay. We'll just widen it out a little bit. That'll work. That is, that is really pretty. I think that actually did pretty good on the blend, y'all. And there's plenty of pigment. In fact, like I said, I've had to dab my uh, brush onto the towel multiple times. Let's try doing it this way. This is why we're not doing a demo at the moment. We're just playing because I have hardly used these. I think there's one picture I have that's a Hannah Lynn picture that I had a lot of success with them on. Which is actually going to be the next thing we play with is going to be on a Hannah Lynn um, coloring page. Because I know they work pretty good on that. Alright, so... You saw the 
Karen Dash was like super easy, super easy, barely an inconvenience. Get that reference. Um, sorry, things come up in my head. Um, but with the Karen Dash, you really don't have to work too hard at it at all on this on on just cardstock type paper. Um, the sergeant art I did because the pressure I put down did put little bits of wax. I had to work at it a little harder, but um, it still gives a really good blend. I like that a lot. So that's cool. Now let's see if you flip it over. I mean, you're going to have some wobbly because it's water on paper but you might have got a little bleed through there on the Karen Dash but the Sergeant Art which is up here you see a shadow of all the colors basically be curious to see what happens when it dries okay so now that we've played around on the paper, just regular cardstock paper, let's try Hannah Lynn paper. This is Hannah Lynn's book, Whimsy Girl Through the Girls Through the Decades, which I actually haven't done a page in. If this goes well, this will probably be my first page in the book. <laughs> um, sorry. Hopefully I can edit that out. Um, but the most... Uh, success I've had really the only book I've probably um where did my Hannah Lynn books go there it is really the only successful picture I've used any sort of watercolor crowns in or used the Karen Dash ones was from the Mythical Maidens one this was the background on that one and I used the Karen Dash there and they did pretty well um Hannah Lynn's books are on Amazon paper. There's different types of Amazon paper. And so one book that's Amazon printed may behave differently than other Amazon printed books. So just putting that out there right now. <laughs> My point being is that the paper that Hannah Lynn uses I know can take this stuff pretty well. So. I'm going to put the Karen Dash ones away because we're going to play on this paper with the Sergeant Arts. So I picked this picture because I figured we could do a pretty cool background here. I might actually use the blues that we have um, because I really liked that combo. Um, just trying to think here. So we're going to use these just real quick, as quick as we can. That's actually one supposed to be one of the benefits of these is that you can color a background fairly quickly with these. I'll try to use a little harder pressure. Like I said, you do have to work I think basically the takeaway on these is going to be that you just have to work a little more with them like you know putting them down you have to press a little harder when you go to use the water you've got to kind of play with them a little more just to get everything good and dissolved That's probably going to be my current takeaway from this. Of course, putting more pressure on them probably means you're going to use them up a little more. And they are smaller than the, um, they are smaller than the Karen Dashes, so... I don't know if this <laughs> one good thing about the Hannah Lynn books is you usually get two copies of each picture and so this picture is one of the less um, 
detailed versions and so I do have another version of this picture I can if things really just go crapola on this um, I do have I do have um, another page I can I can use let's bring it up a little bit more I am very much a novice with these as I said so please please don't consider me the uh, expert in using these types of things for coloring so okay now we're gonna bring the lighter version up plus I wait so long in between using these that um, sometimes I have to use them for a little bit again to just get kind of used to them like oh hey yeah that's how these work All right, so we're gonna come in with a blue the ultramarine And when I go to activate these, I'm also going to go ahead and tell you, it's probably going to be kind of sloppy. Because I don't, <laughs> I don't do a real good job at, um, no, that is part of her arm, Michelle, don't color that. I'll do a real good job at precision when I color. Y'all see me with my markers. I have oopsies all the time. Sometimes they're fixable, sometimes they're not. A lot of times they're just not noticeable. Now, this is probably too dark a blue for like a realistic sky, but... That's okay. Ain't all gotta be. I'll use a little lighter pressure here. It ain't all gotta be a hundred percent real, real up in this tizzy. Yes, I know. I know. Just give me my, give me my dork card for using such phrasing, and <laughs> and not being cool enough to use such phrasing. I am actually doing this on Sunday because um, I want to make sure I don't wind up with trying to do this first thing in the morning and um, I got a lot of work coming my way tomorrow so I figured this would be kind of low-key kind of fun to do today this morning I can give it time to dry and then I might play with the rest of the picture this afternoon I'm actually so I try to make Sundays my really low chill like my chill days um, just to kind of mentally prep me for the week and um, so I'll probably do a lot of coloring from the couch I might play some Animal Crossing I might take a nap who knows now I am probably using way too much pigment here I probably could have gotten away with a lot less. That's okay. I like really vibrant color. So, should be all good. Mm -hmm. I guess this did kind of turn into a little mini color and chat, didn't it? But one of the good things about these is that they are a lot faster. Now I do try to be a little more careful about my lines here just because with the Amazon paper it is, it's not printer paper but it's definitely not cardstock quality in terms of weight or thickness or whatever. So. I'm not going to have as much playroom to really make sure all lines are good and dissolved. And since this requires a little more work, 
at it. I don't. And once you really get that hard edge off of it, like you see the the lines of it really seem to you seem to have less of those. So. Okay, so there is that. And how are we on our water? We should be good. Okay. So I know a lot of people go from light to dark, um, but I tend, I just do better going dark to light and just dabbing, whoops, sorry, just dabbing my brush a lot as we go along. Let me grab some coffee. Wow, this did take longer than I thought. That's fine. Always does. Always does. I can't say I'm surprised. That's cool though. Alright. Now, what am I expecting? I'm expecting to have to work with this a little bit more. Because, um, of what I saw on the cardstock. Actually, pulling some of this pigment down might be a good idea. Okay. Now, I am very lightly touching it with my brush. I actually, it is dissolving pretty darn well. I don't have to really dip my brush down and just go at go to town you know I'm actually just very lightly I'm using RT's a water brush by the way if you're wondering and I am gonna hit a lot of the leaves but if I'm using marker or pencil it should cover it up pretty nicely I don't and I've learned that's not too much of an issue so Now, I wouldn't call this a sunny day sun, this is, or a sunny day kind of sky. This is probably more of a, it might get a little stormy today kind of sky. <laughs> yeah, definitely the lighter pigment that I put down um, didn't cover as well. So... If you really do want a good coverage um, using the really using a harder pressure on this is going to be the way to go. Now a lot of people and this is the reason I wanted to do this on an Amazon printed book too is um, I figure if I can show you what this does at its worst then then um, it will only get better from here meaning this is really tough paper to work w with with uh, water products especially I did not pre-treat this paper so um, even pre-treating this paper with like watercolor ground or um, oh shoot what's the other stuff gelato is not right gelato is gelatos are kind of like watercolor crowns and that's something else because I have gelatos and y'all never seen me use them um <laughs> what am I thinking of what is that stuff anyway there's stuff you can put on paper to basically turn it into like watercolor paper and there's watercolor ground there's some other products out there that I've used um gesso that's why I'm thinking of a G at least it was close um and I have used that on Amazon paper without a problem and it's worked well. Um, but like I said, if we can kind of show what it's doing on paper that is not ideally built for it, then theoretically it should do a whole lot better on any of the other paper in our books, right? <laughs> At 
least that's my logic. I don't know if that's very sound logic, but that is what I'm going with. I would, my plan, what I would like to do is use these um, if the colors, if the colors are appropriate that for what I need, um, I would like to use these in Joanna Bassford's Magical Jungle. And that's kind of the plan. I have. So. Like I said, um, you do have to work at it a little bit, but not not bad, not bad at all. Like I'm maybe going over it twice. And of course using a little water will cut that down. And I'm, I've gotten to the point I'm not too afraid to use water on this paper. You don't want to soak the paper because it's just going to rip to pieces and it's just going to be a big old mess. But I can squeeze this water brush a fair amount. You see how much water I'm actually putting on the paper. And even without treating it, it um, it's fine. It will be wavy when it dries, and that some people don't like that, but that doesn't bother me. So let's get this little bit right here, and then we'll move on to our other side. Hmm. Oh, wait, I'll just let it dry a bit and then come back through. And I will put jumps in the description like I always do. Man, I might have to use some gel pen right here. This is pretty dark bleeding. But um, I'll put jumps in the description. So if you don't want to watch all this process, you can kind of just skip to the end. And use water to kind of thin it out a little bit at least. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I'm not too concerned about bleeding a little bit or the color going into some of the other parts because usually with these with this being watercolor I can cover it up with something usually just markers or gel pens will work just fine um, oops I forgot a little bit right there I think even colored pencil would do, would cover it up so it's not as dire as if like a marker bleeds which marker bleeds aren't really too much of an issue for me anymore but like if it's a ble dark bleed onto what's going to be a lighter piece of the picture then yeah obviously that becomes an issue and that is where <laughs> gel pens are amazing because they are really good at covering up <laughs> they're really good at covering up mistakes just FYI I learned long ago that I don't have the patience to sit and just slowly activate stuff or color with markers um, now because this paper will dry quickly you do have to work quickly so once you wet an area you want to really go ahead and make sure it gets good and dissolved because it will try to dry on you pretty quickly. Yeah, we went ahead and got there. So far, I am liking them pretty well. Like I said, theoretically, this guy should have been probably been a lot more lighter blue but that's okay 
Like I said, we are just kind of playing. Trying them out. Playing around with them. Leroy, do you want to go outside, buddy? But yeah, once I get this work on the little pieces for this one today and then I'm going to go chill out because tomorrow starts a very busy week very busy appointments Wednesday and Thursday um, let me, so let me grab let's see the little bits I missed so you can also just pull directly from the pencil or the crown, I guess, in this case. Which is good for filling in these little bits and piece areas that I was missing. So, it gives an interesting look. Alright, so, um, and I'm going to make sure I dry that. Make sure you dry the crown off, too, because you don't want it to continue to dissolve it. So, just on that picture, um, I hardly use these. It's one good thing. One good thing. That's one of the many good things about these crowns. You can also kind of go back over it. I try not to do this too much on the Amazon paper. Just because um, you're, you're going wet on wet paper. And like I said, this is pretty thin paper. So um, you run the risk of kind of tearing it when you do that maybe maybe what I should do actually is come down further with the light blue where I went lighter with that mid blue color I'm not real happy with that so probably what would work out better is if I come in with a light blue and it'll hopefully lighten it up some Like I said, if you are not used to using water on Amazon paper, this is not necessarily something I recommend you do. I'm just really impatient, as we've as we've discussed. It does feel a bit streaky if you go kind of light with them, but if you put pretty, if you put down a uh, pretty good pigment like I did for most of this picture. Oh, well, that's a little better. Um, then, I think they work great. We'll have to see. I'll give it a little bit of time to, little bit of time to dry. Whoops, see look, I tore the paper right there. Bummer, bummer, I wasn't being careful. See, see? Look, I can show y'all exactly what not to do. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I think I can salvage it. Oh, nope. We're not going to do that. Okay. So, I'm not going to do that anymore. We're just going to call this good. But that right there is exactly what happens when you try to go over wet paper. Um, you run a, a big risk of it. I keep saying I'm not going to do it and then look what I do. Michelle feels like tempting fate today apparently. So if you want to add to the paper, if you want to add color to it, I would recommend get, letting it completely dry. Um, even then I would be cautious because as you continue to work the paper it is going to continue to deteriorate and then um, you, you're still going to run the risk of it, um, ripping, just like it did. See, I'm showing you guys what not to do. That's what my videos are. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to give this a little bit of time to dry. This is kind of what it looks like on the other side. It definitely is going to bleed through on this thin paper, so always keep a page behind i always keep a page behind whatever pa page i'm coloring in whatever book just because it instills a habit in me so that i don't forget 
in the books that I really need it for. So let me give this some time to dry and then we will come back and wrap this up. So here it is, mostly dry. I'd say it's dry. Um, like I said, you do see a little bit of bleed through, particularly if you use a lot more water, um, especially on the Amazon paper. So um, now if you use a gesso or watercolor ground or something, you may not have this issue. Something I'd like to test in the future, but this video is long enough. So um, I really like how they did. I think they did really well. And um, I... Let me, where is my other one? Okay, so the one I showed you before, there is the Karen Dash, and then here is the Sergeant Art. Now, granted, these are different colors. I didn't use the uh, pink and yellow in this, though, I mean, that would have been nice, but I didn't use it here. Um, it, it probably is a little streakier. But overall, um, I think these are a great option if you just want to try out watercolor crayons. If you're not 100% sure if you're going to like them, um, and you don't want to drop the big bucks on the Neocolor 2s, I would recommend these, trying these. Um, and like I said, for one picture, you saw how little I used of them. So they will definitely give you plenty of, um, even though they're slightly shorter than the Karen Dash, I think you will have them for a very long time. Um, unless you just use them every picture all the time, which a lot of us tend not to. Um, so if you're just trying them out, um, if you do you want to try using water on Amazon paper, they work. You can see it is a little wavy. Um, I did use a piece of tape to patch up my hole. <laughs> um, you can still see it just a little bit, but it's not too bad. Um, I just have to be careful when I'm uh, coloring that part in. But no, I think these are great if you just want to try out watercolor crowns. Um, they surprised me with the amount of pigment they had. You do have to use a little more pressure with them to get that strong color. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, it wasn't enough that like it would hurt my hand. It's not like a heavy pressure on a pencil or anything. It's not like that. Um, they did sometimes leave waxy bits, so you may have to work at the paper a little more. But, like I said, if you like these and you're comfortable with these, then if you, you know, use them a lot and you want to invest in the Neocolor 2s, then you're going to get an even, like, smoother experience. But I think these are great. If you're not sure about Neocolor 2s, try these. And you don't, have never used watercolor crowns first, I would say try these. There's others out there I would like to try, but for <laughs> since I have this and the Neo Colors now, I don't really need anything else. So I don't know if I will get them or not. There's a fabric I sell watercolor crayon set out there. These are also available, I believe, in a 36 set. Um, that one might be 30. Yeah, that one's 30. Um, had I realized I would like them, that one does come with more browns, it looks like, more yellows, um, some more, maybe some more violets, a few more greens. Um, so had I known, I probably would have invested in that set. Um, I don't know. We'll see. Um, just trying to be mindful about purchases this year. Anyway, I like them. I probably will try to use them. My next goal to test them and use them is in, sorry if I hit the mic, Magical Jungle. I would like to tackle one of these double page spreads. Like maybe this one at the front is what I'm thinking. Where's it at? This one right here would be great just because it's at the front and everything. And the other part of that tree is missing and that's driving me crazy. But like use them maybe up here maybe all through here and then I might even use them right here um, for kind of the cliff face I don't know but um, maybe use them for the water so I thought this might be a fun one to try them on we'll see um, I do need to test them just to make sure because I said they did bleed through well you can't really test them here um, you can test them here in the back 
God, I got so many reviews I got to do. I've still got to whip in this one. I got to like try them right here or something and see. Oh, there we go. Right there. I can try them out to make sure they won't bleed through. But I don't think they will. I could also go ahead and treat this. But anyway, that's my next goal. Um, this might be a picture. The picture I do next, Color with Claire, is doing a Joanna in January type color along. The, and I love Magical Jungle, so this would be... A good one to do also would be good for my for like a colored pencil picture which I need to do we will see but Wednesday's video is going to be like a new to me artist kind of spotlight um, it's not a new release per se but it's one of her books that's kind of a different kind of color by number book that I want to go over and just kind of introduce her because she's new to me but anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I do have a small cat clip after this and then a uh, clip showing you guys some of the medicine I got for the cats, which is kind of just really funny to me how much of it I got. Um, so if you guys want to stick around and check those out. Otherwise, I will see y'all Wednesday. I hope you have a good start to the week and bye for now. Tried to cut off on me. Yeah, so he's probably going to sit in here for a while, which is fine. I can work around him. I just think it's hilarious and probably going to have to buy more hoodies and start wearing them now. Aren't they just spoiled little monkeys? Let's see your nose. <laughs> he pulled it back like, no. No nose. No nose. What am I looking at? Okay, I see your eyes now. Oh, He's like, let me see. It's so warm and comfy. Yeah. All right. I just thought y'all would enjoy that. At least he's keeping me warm too. So I guess I guess this is a benefit for both of us. He's still a spoiled old brat though. So I had to show you guys because I laughed. I thought this was hilarious. So, um... Oreo, um, I've started giving him lactulose, which is kind of like, um, I don't know, prunes for cats. I mean, it's, <laughs> it helps them go to the litter box if they're suffering like constipation issues and stuff. Um, and, um, I've started giving him some cats with kidney disease, um, because of the, all the water they're consuming is like going to their kidneys a lot of times that kind of dries their system out so it can cause constipation difficulty when they go to the litter box um also the aluminum hydroxide powder i use um to offset the phosphorus in his meals um that can also cause constipation I've noticed with Oreo that he has moments where he'll use the litter box and then he'll throw up right after, which signals to me he's having difficulty passing stuff and just the effort of it, hopefully no pain, but it, it's just with his kidneys and everything, it's just making him physically sick. So I've started giving him lactulose at my doctor's, with my doctor's, okay. He's getting it about every other day, though he can get it daily if he needs it. And I notice a huge difference. We don't have that problem anymore. Um, lactulose in a, in a cat that needs it um, can actually kind of help a little bit with their kidney numbers sometimes. Um, but obviously you don't want to give it to a cat that doesn't need it because then you're going to have the opposite problem. <laughs> so um, anyway... I was out of lactulose, and so I asked him to send more, and I expected, like, this little bottle of it, right? And <laughs> they ordered it for me, and when I went to pick it up, they gave me this thing. Guys, there is... <laughs> I had to show it to y'all because it's so funny. Look! <laughs> it's like a quart. I think it's a quart. Is that what it said? Let me look. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it says one quart. <laughs> that is enough lactulose for every cat in this house, probably for the rest of their lives, with some left over. 
Now, it does have an expiration, but I think with this kind of stuff, it doesn't really, it, it takes a really long time for it to go bad. So, I with the cats getting older, um, this will c probably come in handy. It's just really funny because this was not what I was expecting. <laughs> and um, I just think it's funny, like, I, I can't imagine handing this all out to the cats. My my husband is kind enough to split the cat duties with me. <laughs> well, that's a bad pun right there. Duties, D-U-T-I-E-S, though I guess you could consider the other part of that um, because he's the one cleaning the litter boxes. And um, I, the ultimate troll would be to give all the cats lactulose, but he might, he might divorce me if we do that so we're <laughs> we're not gonna do that plus plus that is never never uh, that is not something i would ever do obviously um i'm only giving this to oreo the poor cat takes so much other stuff i'm only giving this to him because i just feel like he absolutely needs it and he's done great since i've started giving this to him like i said he really only needs it every other day so um anyway just wanted to share this thought it was funny